past two years since I've been sharing my home here on YouTube with you for the holidays, I've dedicated at least one video to decorating the Christmas tree. There I share a lot of tips and tricks on how to decorate a beautiful tree. Those videos are in the description below if you're interested. But this year I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Instead of sharing my best tips with you, I thought I'd just bring you along with me as I decorated this tree in my dining room step by step. So let's get to decorating. <laughs> having to add some lights to this tree this year, not necessarily to give it more vibrance. Uh, you can't really tell with the studio lights in here, but the tree is actually lit very nicely. However, I had to add these lights because when I got this tree out, which is quite old, and plugged it in, the lights did not work. I made a quick Home Depot run and added some lights to the tree, and now we are good to go. the other way just kidding does it or no yeah before we get started let me show you the items that we have to work with today Here's a quick look at all of the items we can potentially add to the tree today. You will notice that Santa is pretty much the star of the show in today's design. I'm also using my hat tree topper that I love so much and the color palette is staying traditional for this tree as well. A big focus on red with some golds and whites and of course green thrown in. starting today at the top of the tree by placing the topper on first I always like to just go ahead and get my topper placed on the top first to avoid knocking off any precious or breakable ornaments that I may add to the tree later I really love this topper but I wanted to jazz it up just a little bit so I'm adding in the two ribbons that we'll be using throughout the tree to the top as well <laughs> pretty heavy with the ribbon just at the top of the tree so that it somewhat becomes a part of the topper. I'm intermixing both the red and plaid ribbon that I plan to use throughout the tree. that I found at Hobby Lobby last year is what really inspired the design in this room. I decided to do a bit of a Santa theme in my dining area and on the dining room tree. And I really loved his plaid hat here. So I knew that I wanted to incorporate some more plaid into the tree. 
So what I thought I would do is add a bit of this plaid ribbon throughout the tree, just sporadically here and there, in addition to the red velvet ribbon that I've added all throughout the downstairs design this year that you've seen in videos past. We're keeping the ribbon design pretty subtle on this tree, just like we did the tree in the living room. Since this is an open concept space and we can see both trees, I wanna keep the balance and symmetry between the two. I am starting with my plaid ribbon today simply because I have less of this. This is all I have. I didn't really plan to use this this year. I went through my ribbon box and this is what I landed on. I only had two small rolls of this. How many feet? This is only 25 feet. It's not a lot of ribbon to do a tree. And I put a lot on the top. I used a full 25 foot roll for the topper. And now I'm just going to add this around the tree. And I want to be very intentional about it because like I said, I don't have a lot. I'm gonna find my scissors. Okay, scissors. So I'm using the same technique that I used on my other tree this year with the other ribbon, which we'll add momentarily, the red velvet. But this ribbon is different. It's a thinner ribbon. As you can see, it's, you can see through it a bit. It's still wired, but all ribbon acts differently, right? So we wanna get the same look. So I've gotta work with it a little bit differently and I'm just gonna show you how I do it. I usually speed this up, this process, but I really wanna show you how I place this ribbon because I get a lot of questions. So I'm gonna start here, even though typically I'd start up a little higher, but for the sake of showing you this, I'm gonna just start here. You don't have to start in any specific spot on the tree with this ribbon technique if you don't want to. The easiest way to work with your ribbon is from top down, in my personal opinion. So I always suggest when people ask me, top down. But right now I'm gonna start here just to show you. And I'm just gonna pull it into the base of the tree. You can attach it if you need to. My trees tend to hold the ribbon pretty well in place, but you can always use a branch. You can always use pipe cleaners. You can always use uh, zip ties or even a gardening wire to attach your ribbon any way you'd like to your tree. But I just pull my ribbon and tuck it. Now, in order to get the, the desired loop, I like different sizes of loops and I like them to be different widths from the tree. And I just kind of eyeball that. So I'm gonna start with this first loop and I want it to be a pretty good size loop. So as I'm tucking here, I'm just working with the ribbon and moving it in as I, as I tuck that in. I hope that's a good description. Sometimes I'm not the best at explaining these things, but I try. And then I'm just gonna bring it around and tuck it, tuck it again. I don't want the ribbon to outshine the tree. So we're just gonna do a little bit, pulling it back in there, making it a little tighter of a loop. And then I am gonna snip this I really just need a little bit here because so we're gonna space it out. Because I'm spacing out my ribbon and I'm intermixing the plaid with the red velvet, I'm gonna try to get an even-ish spacing around this tree with both ribbons, but I also want it to look really natural at the same time. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna cut a few more pieces off and just place them around, kind of lay it out before I put it on. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's do that now. Let's see, what do we have working for us now? It's always good to step back and look. Before I start actually looping this ribbon in that I just placed, the plaid ribbon, I'm gonna do the same thing with the red so that I get a good, even disbursement of both. All ribbon is not created equal. I'm gonna show you the difference. This ribbon wrinkles very easily, so I don't like to mess with it too much until I make my loops. This one is pretty more forgiving. It's a different fabric. You can see the difference here. Look at the back of this one versus the back of this one and the fronts. There. Different ribbon acts differently on a tree. That's why I always suggest this ribbon because it just loops so beautifully if that's the look that you're going for.
After most of the ribbon is on, I'm starting with my largest ornaments first today. I like to put the largest items on my tree first because that always helps to fill in the gaps that I may have. I also am focusing on tucking these into the tree to give the design more depth and dimension. tip when you have ornaments that you have multiples of like I do these Santa ornaments here is to hang them at the same time this will ensure even placement throughout your trees so I'll hang all of these guys first and then I'll move on to this one and so on all of my small and sentimental ornaments last. Because my theme is coming home for Christmas, I really want all my trees this year to just feel familiar. I want my guests to come into my home and see the trees and the decor and just feel like it's a Christmas that they've always known. That sense of sentimentality in the space that I think makes this season so special. So I hope that I've achieved that this year. I, I'm happy with it. Let me know what you guys think. forgot I have my baby's first Christmas ornament I forgot I had this I need to put it on the tree okay so I want more red in my tree I don't like I tried out the picks I don't like the picks it's not what I'm going for I think it's beautiful but it's just not what I envision in my head I would like more red ball ornaments but in reality I don't have them and honestly it's Black Friday, the day that I'm filming this, and I'm not running out to the store. So I think what I'm going to do is just add some more of this red ribbon in and we'll see how it turns out. Now I'm just finishing up by filling in with more ribbon. Once you step back and take a look at your design, if you have any voids or spaces you need to fill in a bit more, you don't necessarily have to use ornaments. You can always add in more of your ribbons or picks and sprays if you use those. adding these pre-lit boxes that you've seen me use inside my trees actually in years past beneath the tree to give the base a little more light. Since gifts are going under the living room tree this year, I thought this was a fun way to add a little something to the base of this one. much for trimming the tree with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you have a very Merry Christmas, a very happy holiday season. I will see you again soon. We've got lots more holiday videos to come, but until then, happy decorating. Bye.